Hi, this is a price action analyst. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I just want to do a recap of some commodities and stocks that I looked at on the 7th of July. Um, and I'm going to have to just mark up my charts while I'm recording because E-Trade's not being cooperative today. So just bear with me. But that that bar there is the 7th of July. So that's the last time I looked at gold. And just frame up the price action here. So gold had, you know, with the COVID stuff come down here and since then made one, two legs up and then had consolidated in this pattern here. And um, this was the 7th of July. So obviously it had broken out and was moving up. And I did two things in that video. I made a projection of where the price was going to go. So I did it based on, you know, that line is a good estimate for the for the length of the next leg up, but also um, the previous highs I was watching too. So my prediction was that gold was going to get you know, you possibly would see weakness there. Um, and also, you know, the exact, um, halfway between those two highs is also uh, a good place for a short term fade. Um, so we've got three lines there. So I said that, I said that gold will at least get to the middle line, but my, my long term ex expectation is that gold eventually, um, passes through the all time high and then moves up to make new highs. So in relation to those lines, these are weekly bars, we'll just go back to the daily. So it's very close to um, testing that line, my expectation is that it will get at least to the middle line before it shows substantial weakness. So um, you know, substantial weakness is, you know, a, a sig sub significant drop off in price, I guess this is not substantial weakness. Um, but ultimately, that projection takes us to the high. And so um, I think it's going to get there, I think it's going to get there in the context of what's happening with the currency. You know, this is this is a devaluation of the US dollars is really what you're seeing here. Um, but uh, that my sort of expectation is painting in as we speak. So that one, that one looks good. Um, silver was the other one. So if I just find the 7th of July, it's right there. So that's the 7th. And then there's also a longer term trend line in play here. That one there. So the chart, the chart looked like that on the seventh. And what I was saying was, you know, this is this was the leg up. And so that would be the projection for the the next move. Um, and also, you know, going back to that day, my point was, um, you know, first leg up consolidation, second leg consolidation that, you know, silver had broken out here. Um, it was taking its time. But generally, when it starts to move, it's pretty, you know, it's, it gets um, pretty violent. You know, when these break, they happen to do it um, pretty aggressively. So my expectation, you know, on that, that day there was that silver was at least going to test this trend line and probably with this V spike, it was probably going to push out of this trend line. Um, and a push out of that trend line means that 
we're now, you know, all these prior highs now are now in play. And my, my long term expectation is that silver is eventually going to get to its previous high and probably go past that. Um, I'm not basing that on this chart. That's just, you know, based on the fundamentals and what's happening. So anyways, we see that silver has, you know, it paused at the line very briefly. And now it's pushed very strongly outside of that line. So, you know, there's your breakout. Um, the gaps like to fill. So, you know, and it's outside the Bollinger Band, you could, you could very well see, I, you will see some sort of retrace. I mean, those, those gaps tend to like to fill, but if, if silver does ever retest this trend line, that's a really good place to, to take a long position. So, you know, if you're not in silver yet and you're looking to do it, um, you know, long term, I, you can buy it here. I think, I think ultimately it's getting back to the high of 48. I don't know how or how long it's how, you know, what the price action will look like on the way there or how long that will take. So, you know, but if you were short term trading, I wouldn't buy it here. Um, I would wait for some sort of retest and then I would hit the long there. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's very strong at the moment. I mean, that's a huge gap up. So silver is silver is finally doing what I had hoped and expected. I mean, my expectation was was it for was for it to break out of this trend line on the upside, but there's no way to predict how it's going to do that. And I, it, it, you know, it can't look stronger than that. So we'll have to wait and see what happens from here on out. But I think silver is going to be very strong. And, and the other thing I said about silver is that uh, whenever you see a V spike out of a low, you know, this was the You know, this this low here was support. It wasn't the all time low, but that was a support level. And whenever you see price just spike out of a level like that, a V, expect strength. This is this is textbook for what ha when I see a V is bullish. When you when price, you know, if price you get a strong leg down and price doesn't roll over and retest the low, i.e., it just spikes out of there. Expect price to just move up. And so you're seeing that, you know, I was saying that here, I was, I def, I'm pretty sure I said it on the 7th of July video, like with that V spike, I'm very bullish. So this is, this is what you see with, with those, with, with V spikes they are very bullish indicator. So again, silver is, is doing what we've expected. You know, it's got to the projection thing and it's to the projected price and it's done it very quickly. So, um, that all looks good so far. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens now, you know, with that big gap. Is it going to keep pushing higher or is it going to roll over? And like I say, the, the gaps tend to like to fill. So we'll, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Um, the other one I looked at was ConocoPhillips. So that's the seventh there. The problem I'm having with uh, E trade today is it's not saving. Normally it saves. I can draw trend lines on all the charts and it saves them, but today it doesn't seem to be wanting to save any of the trend lines I do. So every time I pull up a chart, I have to draw a new trend line, which is annoying to say the least. But uh, thanks for your patience, anyways. So that was the 7th of July, that last red bar. Um, and basically what I was saying was that, you know, I was seeing weakness here and that, 
you had kind of a wash of this pivot here and, and a little bit of strength up, but it was starting to roll over again. So I expected it to break through this low and at least get to this wick here and then maybe even, you know, other lows. So again, I mean that, I expected it to get there, but I thought it was gonna do more than that. And also the oil price I thought looked like it was gonna roll over and I'll look at that in a second. But you know, we did, we did get, we got a strong day of weakness there. And so I think I had a, um, I'd sold a call option there. And so that push down was enough to, for me to get out of the call option with a, with a decent profit, like 70 or 80%. Um, but then since then Conoco has moved up and it, it moved up, broke out of this trend line and then retested, didn't come all the way back, but today it's quite strong. So I think I don't see Conoco pushing further down now. I think this breakout and if, especially if this push up closes above this bar and it starts to move, then Conoco is going to, Conoco is going to come and push for that high again. So that looks very strong. It's kind of, you know, this, you had this gap here, which price struggled against for a while. And then it, it, it uh, finally pushed up, came to this peak and there was a lot of selling pressure there. And so that, that, you know, that off the, that wick there, that might be the last of the selling pressure. I think this, this might move up and uh, that's happening in conjunction with, remember this is now, you know, with gold and silver, Gold and silver are good because um, like I'm invested in it, so I'm making money, but there's, I'm also, it's also quite ominous because I see inflation, I see a devaluation of the dollar, I see everything that they're doing showing up in the market. So, um, you know, you've got inflation now driving these commodities up too. So, um, with, you know, in the context of that, if we get some strength here in the next couple of days, I think that that might be the short term low. And I think it, it's going to come up and test that previous high at 50. So, you know, it's it doesn't as it broke out of there and pushed up, um, you know, I, I've kind of expected to push higher. And that's kind of, you know, that sounds wishy-washy maybe, but, you know, I've found in trading, you have to be able to change your bias you fault you have to be um, malleable when it comes to price action so you know here I saw a short weakness and you get that weakness and so it depends on what you're trading you know if you buying an option here that might be enough to get out for a profit um, it's not enough for for a, a, a debit spread a put debit spread to make money but you could have made money there on a short-term option on futures. Definitely like that's a big move on the futures market. Um, but as soon as price kind of pushes out of that trend line, your premise has to change very quickly. And especially if you're holding the position, you know, you have to be able to cut that or wait for a retest of the trend line and then switch to a long. So, you know, short-term trading requires you to be nimble and change your bias. Uh, rather quickly. So, you know, where I was bearish there, I'm now expecting price to push up. Um, you know, and the other thing that I notice here is you, you, you get lows and you get a wash of the lows and push up that are very weak and another, another low. And now the push ups are getting stronger. So, you know, especially if the next couple of days are strong, then the, the momentum is shifting to the bullish side for sure. So um, that's Conoco. So, you know, it kind of got to where I at least thought it would, but I, I also expected it to push lower. So anyways, you know, you, you can decide whether I was right or wrong on that. Um, just looking at the West Texas Intermediate Crude, CL futures. These are uh, weekly bars. This is very strange. Uh, you know, this weakness here is because of the gap, I think. But, you know, you, you're getting selling pressure, but it's not pushing that down. So um, 
expect a big push out of here one way or the other. And I, I kind of expect the push to be on the upside. So when price coils like that, um, you're going to get a push one way or the other. But I'm kind of, you know, I think what's happening here is you're getting the bars are getting smaller and smaller because you're getting selling pressure and the selling pressures and you it's meeting buying pressure, but the selling pressure is not enough to make the price roll over. So I'm kind of expecting it to just push up here. And again, I don't trade on fundamentals, but given what's happening with the inflationary environment, like I, I think that's going to have upward pressure on the prices of all sorts of commodities. So, you know, personally, I, I expect oil as gold and silver are going to make new all time highs. I'm, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I, and this is not chart based, but I expect oil to do the same thing, especially if they keep valuing it in, in, uh, us dollars. So yeah, I, again, I, I wouldn't necessarily trade that cause I'm not sure enough. I'm just kind of expecting to see a pop here. And I think when you do see a pop, it's going to be quite aggressive. If it's on the downside, I think it'll be an aggressive pop too, but I kind of, I'm kind of now with that coiling like that, expecting it to just push up, but we'll see. Again, that's not, uh, I wouldn't necessarily make that an official prediction, but uh, you know, I, if I was trading futures here, I'd probably just sit out. Like I'm not, not sort of um, wedded enough to a position, but that's kind of my least expectation now that price has done this. You know, usually you'll just see price roll over, but it doesn't, doesn't generally coil like that. Um, so yeah, we'll wait and see, but you know, that, and the other thing that makes me think this is going to push up on the upside is all the, the major oil companies like ConocoPhillips are having like a, you know, they're, they're starting to push up now. So, um, I'd be surprised if the oil companies push up and then the oil price kind of rolls over, It'd be kind of odd. Um, what else did I want to look at? So I might just do, uh, I also will just finish up by just talking about the spy. So th these ones I was wrong about. Um, I did a couple of videos about this saying it was like 0708 price action. You know, you had a gap here. So, you know, you did see weakness off the gap. And again, if you're short term trading with like derivatives, you probably could have made money there. And again, you know, you had, you had your price sort of stalled at the gap again, and then it, it opened higher and came down, but eventually price is pushed through and it looks like price is going to push up here. So, you know, longer term, I was wrong about the spy. And I mean, I could not take responsibility and say, oh, it's because the government's printing money, but it doesn't, trading doesn't work like that. Like you have to be able to read the market. So, you know, my premise, you know, that day I was still hopeful and there I kind of, you know, I could tell it was getting away from me. So I did, I did take a short position there. So I took a put debit spread. I'm not sure what the exercises prices are, but that, that, that is now pushed away from me. So I expect that to be a, well, it's almost certainly going to be a losing position. Um, and also when the SPY moves up, the, the VIX moves down. So I was wrong about that too. This is the 7th of July here. So on that day, you know, I was expecting, I was expecting the SPY to uh, push up from here. And again, I appreciate you bearing with me while I redraw all these trend lines. Um, you know, I thought this was a breakout and I thought this was a, a uh, you know, this long winded retest, they generally press up. And so, you know, that was, that, that's where I did the video. I also took a long position in the VIX and so I was in the money there and everything looked good. I thought price was gonna push away, but as the SPY has moved up, the VIX has just fallen off. So um, I still have that long position. 
again, I, f I forget, you know, normally the strike prices are marked on here, but E-Trade's not saving my lines today. Um, so I'm still holding it, but it's basically, um, it's not worth very much anymore. So, it, and it's only got four days to push up. So I'm just going to leave it and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I was, I was wrong about that as well. So anyways, I thought I would just review those um, gold and silver worked out. Conoco kind of worked out um, in the short term. It worked out enough for me to sell my to re to buy back my my short call option um, for a profit. So I'll take that as a win. And then the spy and the VIX that they're lose they're losing positions and likely to end up as losing positions. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, hope that's help hel helpful. If you have any requests or comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section. And thanks for watching.